wanted to explain what baptism is because we all come in this church, we're kind of a melting pot, and so we all come from just about every background you can think of, and so, so it's not confusing. We just wanted to explain what you're about to see. Plus, baptism is very short, and so sometimes if you just see it, you may go, I don't know what I'm looking at, right? I mean, it's like it happens so fast. Is that really important? And it is. What it represents is absolutely amazing. Jesus said this. Jesus died on the cross, and he rose from the dead, and after he did, before he ascended back into heaven and said, hey, I want you guys to start the church, he left the church with a mission. And he said this, it says this, then Jesus came to them and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Um, that, that's, that's the mission for the church. We come up with mission statements and vision statements but that is the mission for the church. He left it with his apostles, and it conveyed to us. And so what he said is, is he said, hey, go. And basically what that means is, is share what I've done, that is Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for the complete remission of our sins, that we know we're separated from God by our sins. And the only thing that restores that relationship is Jesus Christ's death and burial and resurrection. That's the only thing that could restore us to God, that his one and only son died for us. And he said, hey, when people come to faith, in Jesus, then the first act as his disciple is to be baptized. And what that means is the baptism doesn't, uh, doesn't save us. If, if you knew where this water came from, this is uh, close to Zuni as you can get. And I'm afraid that's just not holy water, right? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just playing. <laughs> but the water in itself is not holy. What it, what it symbolizes is, and so we don't want anybody to be confused. They're not getting saved today. What they're doing is, is they're telling you what's already happened inside of their life. And today we're going to celebrate with them what God is doing in their life. So there's a couple things we celebrate, and we want to make sure you know what that is. And so number one, we celebrate a new life in Jesus Christ, that the old is gone, the new has come, that, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that, that the new life they have isn't because they're perfect. And by the way, after we're baptized, we're still not perfect. <laughs> but, but the point of it is, is that we're striving to be like him, not to earn our salvation, but because of what he's done inside of us. And that they have taken, they've believed in Jesus and that he's come in and he's forgiven them of their sins and he gives them a new life. And we're here to celebrate that today. It says in heaven that when one, when one sinner repents, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people that don't need to repent. Now, let me correct that just a little bit. Jesus was speaking a little bit hyperbole there because he was talking to people that thought they were righteous. <laughs> you ever met them? You ever been to a church where there was righteous, so-called righteous people? And, and what he was doing was he was saying, you guys don't think you need it, <laughs> but everyone is that one. And that's one of the things our church has kind of adopted, that one lost soul, that he would have done it for just one, and just you. And so as we celebrate today, it's huge to have a new life, a new birth. That our, our old life is gone. The new life has come. And that God, we're here today to celebrate that. It's absolutely awesome. The second thing is this. We're here to celebrate belonging to Christ and living for him. If you read the scriptures, that's a big part of it that now we become his disciples, that baptism isn't the last step, it's the first step. Now, some people think it is, right? You ever seen somebody get baptized and you go, yeah, it must not have taken. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but what you saw there was you say, hey, yes, they put their faith and trust in Christ, but they didn't continue, and now there's a responsibility. And I believe that's maybe why there's a little bit of a space. Because when you get in the baptismal pool, there's now a responsibility that says, I need to live for Jesus, right? Because people saw you got in there, and you go, hey, I brought my friends that are unsaved, and they go, hey, is that what a Christian does? <laughs> Believe me, get used to that. That's what they're going to say from now on. They're going, I thought you were Christian. Christians taught like that? Sometimes they think that Christians can't joke, and you're going, yeah, we can laugh. You know, we're not all sober and living on a cloud on a, with a toga and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> you get it? And, uh, and so, so, but you're not going to be perfect. Nobody said that. Nobody that's ever been in the baptismal pool here, never, for whatever reason, none of us are perfect, right? That we still have a sin nature, but God helps us with that. But we strive to be more like Jesus. And so, so that's one thing we're celebrating is now we have a new life, and God will help us take away some of those old behaviors, some of those old lifestyles. The, the beauty of today is this, is we have a lot of children being baptized today or, or young adults, uh, teenagers. And so first service we had one, and it's just awesome to see them come so young. Some of us can look back and go, man, imagine if we had done it then, we might not have to have the scars we do now. Wouldn't that be awesome? But, you know, we just pray for them. It's so great. The last thing that I want to celebrate today is this, and I don't want you to miss this. We celebrate not being alone, but having a church family that loves and supports me. That's big. That it's not to be done alone. You're baptized into the body of Christ, which means that we need you just as much as you need us. 
And we say the body of Christ, I don't just mean New Branch Community Church, because we got some other people here from visiting today, and I want to say we're praying for your church too, because we're all an expression of the body of Christ. And as you're baptized in, you need to be part of a body of believers. And that means two things. One is you need to serve wherever that is. That God didn't just call you to get what you can out of it, and when you stop getting something out of it, you just leave. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? Because there are going to be times that, you, let, me, let me tell you something, there's some good and bad news today. The good news is you got a church family that loves and supports you. The bad news is you got a church family that loves and supports you, right? If you've been around family, then you know it's not, it's not always easy going, right? God is easy to love. People, though, I'm telling you, it's not always easy, right? So, so understand, we have to rub off the rough edges on each other. It's going to be tough sometimes. But here's what I know. If you allow it, then here's what you do. You serve and you be served. Don't think that it's just about you serving. There's a lot of people that think that. I serve people. I don't let anybody serve me. It, you know what Jesus said to that? He said, I, I wash your feet, Peter, and if you don't let me, you have no part with me, which means if you don't allow other people to serve you, you're really not part. So when you're weak, let us help you. When you're when, In church family, that brings us into the equation. Let them help you some. Where they're strong, don't think, oh, that's a new person or that's a kid. They might not have nothing to say. Let me tell you something. Kids can really tell us stuff. The other thing is this. We need to be praying for them. We have a responsibility. Don't be doing this thing. The good part is, is we see teenagers and kids today, and it's easy. But in the future, when you see a baptism, don't do that thing that I've done before where you're going, man, I don't know about that person. I, I think lightning might strike that water, right? I mean, don't do that. Pray for them. God can redeem anyone, right? He redeemed me, so believe me, I, we put it to the test. <laughs> God can redeem anyone, and we, it's our job to come beside them and encourage them and support them and love on them. How many people need more critics in your life? You don't, right? So today, we're here to celebrate baptism. Now, I want to tell you, in our environment, one thing, that, you know, just, just so we do, every now and then, we'll have people from a Catholic or Episcopalian background or some people with liturgy, and we don't want to put that down. We're not here to debate all that. But what I want to say is this, is if, if you had your child baptized as an infant, Please don't take this in the wrong way. Sometimes people have where they go, is not, what I did, is that not good enough for them? Please take it as today fulfills the faith that you so desperately wanted them to have. Um, the other thing I want to say is sometimes people say, hey, can I have my infant baptized? We don't do infant baptisms, but if you have a baby and you want them dedicated to the Lord, if you have an adult that you want them dedicated to the Lord, we can do that too. And we'll set time aside in the service and we'll do that. But please let us know. and We, we would love to do that for you. But we see those as two separate things. Just wanted to clarify that so you make sure you know what's going on. We also believe that this is an informal event. We believe that it's reverent towards God, but informal family, okay? And that means the way we do it might be a little different than what you've seen. We, we don't believe that the pastor is the only one that can baptize, so we do have one of our teen leaders baptizing one of the teens. It's awesome. Um, and we had another lady baptize somebody this morning. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to say about that is this, is that we believe that there's a celebration in heaven. So sometimes people that come from the more liturgical background, I don't want you to have a heart attack when you hear what it's going to sound like in just a minute. So we're going to practice this a minute, and I want you guys to wake up just a little bit because we're going to celebrate when they come up. What do you think it sounds like in heaven? So I'm going to, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to sh see what it's going to sound like when they come up out of the water or what you think it sounds like in heaven as best as you can. I'm looking around, and I don't know about that, but okay, you get the idea. So, so see what it sounds like when they come up out of the water. So one, two, three. <laughs> 